One of the biggest stumbling blocks for beginner photographers, especially those within this street and travel niche, is how to take photos with people in them without getting that awkward look into the camera or someone looking at you wondering what on earth you're doing. In this video, we're gonna unpack this topic and I will share with you some practical tips that you can utilize right away to blend in a little bit more, to have a bit more confidence and to get the types of photos that you want. This video is also sponsored by Squarespace, but more on them later on. Before getting into the techniques, I would like to make some very important points. These tips are not aimed at people that are weird. They're aimed at people who are always respectful and empathetic when it comes to taking photos of others. Just because you can legally take photos of strangers in a particular country, it doesn't always mean it's ethically okay to do so. Now, assuming that your motives and your intentions are good, there is nothing wrong with taking photos of other people in public spaces. One can also argue that having people in your photos can make your images more relatable, add a sense of scale, give some kind of a feeling of life to your image, and more importantly, to document that moment at that time as a photograph that you or others can look at in 50 years time or more. Some might push back and ask, well, if you really want people in your photos, why not just ask them for their permission before taking a photo? This is a valid point that I will touch on later in the video. However, it's not always possible. When people know that they're on camera, their body language changes. Sometimes it might improve the image, but in my experience, in most cases, the image or the scene will be bruised and whatever attracted you to that person at the time, that moment or that thing will be gone. What about if there are numerous people in your shot? Are you gonna then chase every single person in your scene and ask for permission and then ask them to then go back to where they were when you first saw them to take their photo. That's not really practically possible. What if it's a split second moment? Someone's holding in the newspaper, the wind blows it out their hands and this happens and that happens. Are you gonna like just pause life, ask for permission and then go and take a photo? Now a common argument against any blending in techniques is that they can be used to fool others, therefore rendering them sleazy, deceiving, and generally not very nice. However, just like any tool or technique, it can be used for both good and for bad. It really depends on the person using them and their intentions. The main reason for blending in is to not bruise the scene and capture the moment and capture life as it happens in front of you. Finally, please keep in mind that these tips I'm about to share work for me. They're not some gold standard and there are other photographers who do the total opposite and that works for them. The best approach for this type of video is hear what I have to say, try it out, take what you like, disregard what you don't like, and over time that's how you improve. The first method forms the foundation of this video and from there we will build on it throughout this video. And that is to avoid using the viewfinder and to avoid making direct eye contact with whoever it is that you're taking a photo of. Now let's start with eye contact, it's an easy one. When you make eye contact with another person, it sometimes can signify that that person has something to do with what you're doing, especially if they've just seen you with a camera pointing at them. If you wanna make eye contact with that person, do it through the screen. As for avoiding using the viewfinder, there's two reasons. Number one, when you use the viewfinder, you look like you're a professional photographer who knows what they're doing. When you're using the screen and just holding your camera like this, you look like a tourist and you generally look like you don't know what you're doing. The whole idea here is to make yourself look like a lost, silly tourist who doesn't know what they're doing. Now, another important reason for not using the viewfinder is because people generally, as they're walking around, look at other people's faces. And when you see, let's say, 10 faces in front of you, however, one face is covered by a camera, you naturally gravitate towards that because the pattern is then interrupted. And you're wondering why is that person's face covered? Oh wait, it's a camera, why is it pointing at me? And that's when you might get that odd weird look of someone staring into your lens as you're taking their photo. But having the camera lower down and using the screen, your face remains open. Therefore, straight away, you reduce any tension or any questions from other people. Also, people generally don't look at your chest first. Some might do, but that's up to them. But generally, people don't look at your chest first. So if you're wearing like a black T-shirt, you have your black camera, people are not really gonna notice. A huge part of street photography involves working the scene. So you find a great patch of light, a great composition, and then you fish. So you sit there, you wait for someone to come in, maybe you will walk around, try different angles, 
and try and find as many uh, compositions as possible within that scene. However, one thing to keep in mind is if you're hanging around one particular area for a very long time within a busy city that's always moving, you can attract attention, especially from people maybe in the shops around or people who are like watching what you're doing. In my experience, I've always found that if you keep moving around, you blend in a little bit more. So what I mean by that is don't just stand in one place with your camera kind of pointing at whatever it is that you want to take a photo. Just move around a little bit. If you don't get anything in the first five, six minutes, maybe just walk across the road, try something else, and generally keep moving around. Because the more you move around, the more you blend in with everyone else around you. For reasons I don't understand, people seem to be a lot less bothered about being filmed than being photographed. Still not sure why, I'm still trying to figure that out for myself, but in my experience I found when I'm out, let's say in London or whatever, and I'm getting B-roll videos for the YouTube channel, people are just not as bothered. When I'm taking photos, people can uh, notice it a little bit more. So what I tend to do is pretend that I'm filming a video. So that involves having the camera at chest level, screen flipped out like I'm filming a video, and then always moving around. So basically the first two points combined. And as I'm walking around, I'm holding my camera, I've got my thumb on the um, shutter button, screen flipped out as I've said, and then just now and again glance down, make sure the composition's right. And if I'm using a particular prime, like say the 18 that I'm very familiar with, I can kind of shoot blind if something happens immediately. In most cases, I do try and compose and get a shot. But that's another way of getting photos and blending in at the same time. We've all been here, you're walking around the city, you have a great cityscape, let's say a bit of architecture, everything going on. You go to take a photo and someone just walks in front of you without paying attention. Now, this method is that, but the person walking in front of you is the subject, not the cityscape behind them. So what I tend to do is, this works best with the fishing method, you find a nice composition, nice light, you wait, and as someone starts to come into your scene, start taking photos. Now, as they leave the scene, don't immediately put your camera down and definitely don't look at them, but just take a few more photos as they walk past you. If you've done this well, they'll even turn around and see what you've taken a photo of. Or even better, they will apologize for getting in your way. This is one of my most used methods because I personally prefer the fishing technique and it works wonders. The final method is one that I don't use very often because I generally don't shoot in close proximity to people like that. However, now and again, something can happen where I do wanna take a photo of a person close up. However, I don't want to ask for a portrait. Maybe that person is doing something that if I ask for a portrait, it will disturb what they're doing and that particular moment will be gone. However, I do need to be quite close to get all the details of what's happening. This is where I will use a panning technique. So for this, I wanna have a high shutter speed. That's a priority, minimum one over 500, a thousand is even better. I will get into position and I will just stand near them and I will, in my head, have like a rough frame of what the image is gonna look like, obviously depending on the lens that I'm using. I'll then take my camera, go to take a photo just above them, as if I'm taking a photo of the building, for example, take a couple of shots and as I'm bringing the camera down in one smooth motion, take a photo of that person within the frame that you've pictured. You only have one chance for this, you mess it up, you can't do it again because sometimes people will notice you do that. And then in one smooth motion, bring it down, as I've taken a photo, just check the camera, look up and walk away. You do this well, the other person will turn around and look up as well and wonder what you were taking the photo of and not say a single thing. Finally, if you do come across a fantastic character and you want to take the photo and you don't want to miss that photo or you don't want to mess anything up, just ask. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with taking a street portrait as long as you're aware that whatever candid moment was happening might, might be gone. Now, sure, let's say if the person was drinking an espresso or smoking a cigar or making something with their hands, you can probably recreate it, ask them to recreate it. But sometimes it's impossible. However, if you want a photo and you don't want to mess it up, you don't want to upset them, just ask. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any other techniques that you personally use, please write it down below. Also, I want to hear your opinion on whether you agree or disagree with the notion of blending in and taking photos of others when you're out doing street photography or travel photography for that matter. But yeah, that's all. Thank you ever so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.
Now it's time for a quick pause to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is my go-to on-one platform for managing my portfolio, blog, and online store. With Squarespace, I can better optimize my website so that it comes up in search and I get more eyeballs on my work. The best bit is that I can actively manage it from anywhere in the world using any device. Whether you're just starting out or already have an established business, Squarespace is a great choice. If this is something that interests you, click on the link below for a free trial and then 10% off your first purchase. Thank you to you for watching this bit of the video and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring.